In our last lecture, we discussed theory and introduced four classifications of CSR theories. In this podcast, we'll focus on the group of CSR theories emphasizing corporate social performance. At its heart, this perspective and group of theories emphasizes the kinds of socially responsible behaviors and motivations for enacting those behaviors. It mixes what's required or socially appropriate with what's socially desirable. The key authors writing about this perspective include Carroll, Wartick and Cochrane, and Swanson. The basic group of theories argue that organizations have four obligations of performance. Authors applying these theories suggest that these obligations shouldn't be viewed as mutually exclusive, but rather building on one another, and that's why we often see the pyramid that Carroll uses. So if we look at these responsibilities, first, organizations have a fiduciary responsibility. That is, they need to be profitable. When we expand beyond the corporate context, this suggests that all organizations, governmental and nonprofit included, have an obligation to be economically responsible. Second, the corporate social performance perspective argues that all organizations have obligations to obey the laws, that is, at least as they're applicable in the particular locales or cross national contexts. Now, these first two represent concrete, measurable obligations by organizations in order to be socially responsible. However, in the third requirement, the ethical requirement, we see a shift to a different type of social responsibility, the obligation to do what's expected by an organization's stakeholders. This typically pertains to how an organization behaves towards its employees and its community beyond what's simply required. Finally, the CSP perspective argues that social responsibility also means that organizations should do what's desired by stakeholders, that it should be a good global corporate citizen. Now, this could mean traditional philanthropy, but it can certainly mean more than just depending on the type of industry or the type of organization that we're talking about. For those applying CSP-related theories, you can focus on institutional behaviors, so say at the industry level, particular organizational behaviors, or even at the individual level, how members' behaviors within organizations can be viewed as socially responsible or socially irresponsible. What the theories tend to care mostly about is how responsive an is organization is to economic, legal, social, and philanthropic pressures in any organizational environment. So, socially responsible organizations are those whose behaviors, but the behaviors themselves, as well as what happens as a result of them, can be viewed as socially responsible within the four levels of obligation. As a whole, these theories have two critical strengths. First, they genuinely tend to represent most of the developments in social responsibility that we've seen across the decades, and even in the last few years with regards to the changes we've already discussed surrounding globalization and changing values. Second, these theories tend to offer very straightforward and coherent structures for evaluating practical CSR-related questions. That's why Carroll's work in particular tends to be some of the most recognizable CSR work. However, all theory has limitations. In the case of CSP, we find two critical weaknesses. First, how we can define social responsibility is often vague with the CSP perspective. Because social responsibility depends on these four obligations, we can get contradictory perspectives on social responsibility. With a field that's already sometimes hard to understand, these contradictions can sometimes serve to confuse and perplex. Second, these perspectives often fail to include questions about ethical norms within an organization, an industry, or culture, as well as how typical business routines might be viewed as more or less socially responsible. Because social responsibility is defined within these four domains, while normative expectations could be considered within the ethical framework, they often aren't because it's more difficult to connect things like sustainability of a supply chain on a regular basis uh, that is legal and economically viable along with consumer expectations. Likewise, how an organization engages in social media, so long as it meets the other requirements, is hard to measure in terms of the CSP perspective.
But taken together, this group of theories is one approach to understanding, predicting, and creating social responsibility initiatives.